Hello, my name is Rob Garner. I'm a computer programming instructor, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to use ray casting in Unity. So I have an existing project, a Unity project, and if I run this, it's already got a mouse look script and a first person controller script. And we can move around this, uh, this environment we created. And what I want to do is um, is set it up so that I can use ray casting uh, to um, basically shoot uh, some spherical objects around on the screen. And so with ray casting, if you can imagine that we're shooting something from uh, an object, in this case this crossbow, and we're trying to hit this target, uh, we can we can think of a ray as a vector that goes from the origin of the object to a point of intersection in some plane-like object here. So this is ray casting. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the camera as the origin. We're going to project a ray through uh, where the screen notionally is through a point on the screen, which points on the screen start at 0, comma 0, which is the upper left-hand side. And we're going to go halfway down and halfway in to get the center point of the screen. And we're going to project a ray from the camera through there and find out what it might impact on the far side. So that's, and, we're, and to do that, we're going to use this screen point to ray function. So let's uh, give this a try. And so I'm going to add another script. And I'm going to call it Ray Shooter. And as usual, we have a typical mono behavior script with a start and update method. And I'm going to need a reference to the camera. So to hold that, I'm going to create a private variable, which will be of type camera. And we could probably just drag the camera into that variable and serialize it, but we can also get it this way. We can, in the start method, we can say camera equals, and we'll use the get component method. And we're looking for a camera. So we put that as the type in the generic there, and that will get me a reference to the camera when the script starts up. The next thing we want to do is say if We're going to run this whenever the mouse button is um, is down. And let's make a vector three. to point to the center of the camera. And that'll be a new vector, 3, with um, let me get rid of some of this extra stuff here so we can see the whole thing. And if we take look at the camera and we look at its properties, one of the things it has is pixel width and pixel height. And if we divide the pixel width by 2, for the x position and the pixel width, pixel height by two for the y position, that should point to the center of the screen.
And that's what we're doing here. We're half the width of the monitor or the screen and half the or half the height and then half the width will bring us right to the center of the screen. And then we're going to create a ray that uh, goes to the camera center. And the way we get that is we're going to call from the camera uh, class, we have a screen point to ray method. And we need to put in a uh, vector three, which will be our camera center that we just vector that we just created. And next what we need is uh, now we have this ray pointing the center of the camera. We need a way to find what uh, what that will lead to, what that will if there's anything on the other side of that ray. And to do that, we need to use uh, uh, the physics raycast method. And so the physics raycast method, basically the way you use it is this. We create a raycast hit object called target. And if you call the, physic the raycast method from the physics class and you pass in a pointing vector, which is a vector pointing in the direction you want to look at, and what it will do is it will see if it intersects a, um, um, an object um, in that direction. If it does, then the raycast method will pass that through an out parameter uh, uh, called target here. So you pass in the a reference to the, very, the raycast hit object you want uh, to be loaded with the raycast method. And Raycast itself will return true or false. True if it detects something, false if it doesn't. So if you wrap this into a if statement, then um, this is very similar to the try parse method. Uh, you, uh, you check to see if it returns true. If it returns true, then inside of your block of code for the if, you can, you can be comfortable in knowing that you have a Raycast hit object that's not null, that's been that's been uh, filled. So, and this raycast hit method, this class has a number of uh, uh, variables and attributes, and um, uh, all these can be useful depending on what you're using. We will be using uh, either the rigid body or the um, uh, and the point method. The point method or the point uh, variable will return the the three-dimensional point in world space where the hit occurred, and the rigid body uh, returns a reference to the collider that was hit, and you can use that rigid body's um, uh, object game object attribute to get access to the object that was hit. So let's. Uh, So we'll use that pattern here. So we'll create a ray, or a ray cast hit object. Um, so we'll call this maybe object found. And um, or actually, I like the idea. Let's call it a collision object. And it's not really a collision. I think uh, and so then with this we will say if and again we're using the physics class and the uh, ray cast me method and we're passing in the ray to camera center and we're going to use the overload that passes out 
a raycast. You notice there's a lot of different overloads to this raycast method, but we're going to use the second overload, or actually the third overload, which uh, we're going to pass out. that uh, object found, raycast hit. I'm missing a parentheses. There we go. And so within this block of code, I know that my object found, my raycast hit called object found will be filled. And just for now, we will do a debug.log and And we'll just display the point at property of um, this object found. And I'll save that. And go back to Unity and let's give it a try. Oh, and of course, it would be, it works a lot better if you actually throw this onto an object, otherwise the script doesn't run. And we're going to put it onto the main camera. So I'll just grab Ray Shooter and and throw it onto the main camera. And let's try it again. And you can see down here, whenever we the center of the screen is pointing at something we will get the xyz component hit if i aim where there isn't anything for example here i'm aiming high it doesn't change which means it's not striking anything so our ray cast our ray shooter method is working but we would like to do something some maybe some more interesting things uh with this And um, and maybe what we'd like to do is is display some uh, visual indicators. And to do that, what we're going to do is no well, first actually, why don't we experiment with this? Let's uh, we have the object found, and let's get it. We can access the rigid body property. And from the rigid body property, we can access the the game object property, and that will return a reference to the entire game object. And if I two-string this, I should get the name of the game object that I have. Um, alternatively, let's see what else there might be a. So you could you could get the name. Let's try name first and see what we get. And so this will display the name now. If I save that and play. Yeah, we don't have name set for those objects. So we're just going to two string it. And um, There we go. So I had to go off the transform, not the um, rigid body. But you can see now if I go off, if I use that reference to the transform, I am, it will give me the name of what I am, what I am actually striking. So we can We can access the rigid body, we can access this transform, and by doing so, we can get a reference to the things that we want to affect. Now, if your game object has certain scripts, you could use get, uh, get component in order to access that script and make your object do things.
And so let's add uh, some kind of visual indicator to the scene. And to do that, we're going to use uh, something called a coroutine. So a coroutine is a function that can suspend execution until a given um, yield instruction finishes. And um, the coroutine class inherits from this yield instruction cla uh, class. And the yield instruction class, uh, basically, there's a, there's a couple, is a base class for a, a couple classes that we're going to use that um, will that we can use to uh, wait for a certain event to happen before that coroutine completes. And for example, wait for seconds, uh, we'll wait for a certain number of seconds. And this will be useful because uh, if we make a sphere indicator to indicate where we struck on the wall, we can use wait for seconds to have it disappear after a period of time. And um, so our in order to start a coroutine, we're going to use a mono behavior method called start coroutine. And you have to pass in an I enumerator routine, and it'll look something like this. So we'll create an I enumerator routine, that's, which uh, gives us, which returns an I enumerator. And then we can call within this a yield method. In this case, it'll wait for a number of seconds. And then after those seconds, so what this function, what will happen when we call this function, it'll run the first part of this block of code. At the yield, it'll return control back to whatever is executing. And, and this function will run asynchronously. And when it gets done, it will call back to, to this method, but resume execution after the yield. So this can be useful when you have something that you want to happen uh, you know, in this case, a second after the, the future, and then um, come back and, and, in this case, destroy the sphere. So it's a way of um, uh, kicking off something to happen without having to put too much complex code in some update methods. So first, let's, uh, let's just make a, um, a sphere show up, and we'll just throw it in here for now. And to make the sphere work, what we'll do is we'll say we're going to instantiate a game object called this, which we'll call sphere, or I'm going to call it because um, right now it's a sphere, but later on it may be um, something a little bit more creative. And game object has a create primitive method. And you pass in one of these enumerators, in this case, primitive type, and you can pick a primitive you want. And we're going to pick a, uh, a sphere for now. And now that we have the sphere, what we want, or the strike indicator, we're going to want to set its uh, transform position equal to wherever this thing, where the object that was found was. And so we can take ob the object that we found and point, and that's the XYZ coordinate where the impact occurred. So we'll just place a sphere centered right on that position. And let's give this a try. So I'll save this, go back to Unity. And we can see that if I go to this wall, wherever there's a strike, if I'm up in the air here, I don't get it. But as soon as I'm back in, I get strike indicators wherever they occur. Of course, they stay there permanently, so we'd like them to disappear. And that's where this we can use this co we can create a coroutine to wait a few a number of seconds and then 
and then make this disappear. So I'm going to take this code here, which creates the um, which creates this uh, sphere. And uh, to make this kind of work a little more smoothly, I'm going to create a vector three called um, let's just call it impact point. And then I'm going to extract this out into a method. Maybe I'll call it mark impact point. So I guess I have this mark impact point and pass it in the vector three, which is the impact point. And we have uh, the strike indicator is going to just be this primitive sphere. It's going to place it there. And then what I'm going to do is I want this to be a coroutine. So rather than making it void and static, I'm going to make this be an I enumerator. And because it's an I enumerator, now we need to return something. And we do that with the yield command. And the yield will return a yield command with a return. And we're going to return a wait for seconds object and it'll wait one second and after it's done we will destroy the sphere And we can't really just call this like a regular method. We have to use the start coroutine method in order to kick this off. And so what this does is this will call this mark this method, which has to return an I enumerator. It has to have a yield, and it has to return in its yield statement. Uh, one of the uh, yield objects. So it has to return a, um, a yield instruction object or an object that inherits from yield instruction, which in our case, we're going to use wait for seconds. And so I'll save this and let's see if that works. And we can see that we can that the spheres, the strike indicators we're using, which are these spheres, will disappear after a second. Finally, one of the things we'd like to do is have a visual indicator to um, show where we're, where we're, we're creating an impact. And to do that, we're going to use something called the onGUI method. And what the onGUI method is, is a method that's called uh, potentially several times uh, per frame um, uh, that we can use to generate uh, GUIs or respond to GUI events. And so 
the event uh, Unity has an event class that also that uh, that uh, responds to key press actions and mouth mouse actions, and for each event on GUI is called. Um, uh, we get a um, we can uh, we can handle a number of events, and so if we look at the uh, event class, there's a number of events that um, can be handled. We're not going to do much with this uh, for what we need, but um, you could potentially handle these GUI events to see if something is clicked or not. What we're going to do, however, is we're going to use elements of the GUI class. Uh, which will allow us to put controls on the scene. And um, one of the controls, you know, you have buttons and boxes and a number of other things. You can draw textures, which would be actually a very nice way for us to put a crosshair on the screen showing where we're ray casting through. Um, but uh, to keep it simple, we're just going to use the label uh, at, uh, function of the GUI class to draw a a crosshair essentially somewhere in the middle of the screen so that we can we can see where we're we're striking and we'll do that in the the start method and actually we're going to uh, do a couple of things here first we're going in the we're going to from the lurker or the cursors class we're going to call lock state And uh, we're going to pick locked. So this will lock the cursor to the center of the screen. And then we're going to take our cursor and set its visible state to false so that it's no longer visible. And instead of the cursor, um, we're going to create an on GUI. We're going to override the on GUI method. And we'll set the size I'm going to put a plus sign here. And so what this does is essentially just puts a plus in the XY position. And if I, in order to be able to modify the size, I'm going to put this, make this a, a public variable, or actually I'm going to make it a serializable private variable. Our serialized field and throw it up here. This way we can change the size of this if we don't like it later on without having to come into the code. And if we run this, Don't see it, maybe but it's too small. And to get out of the cursor, you have you can hit the escape key.
And let's see, we have the X, the Y, we have the size. And I think I misspelled GUI. It needs to be capital. Let's try this again. There we go. We can see it there. It's not very visible against some of these walls. But maybe I'll make it a little larger. If I go into my main camera, I can change this now. Try 48. It all depends on the resolution, so this isn't a great way to make a reticle, but it's sort of working. So we have the size. And probably the next step would be to change this to actually use some kind of a graphic uh, image and throw, throw that on the screen. So in any case, uh, that completes my demonstration of using a ray shooter. Uh, this can actually be used um, for more than just making a shooting game. Um, uh, more com Another function that you can use this for is if you want to make it so that uh, you uh, user can click on objects in the scene uh, using you can use the ray shooter to get the object they're clicking on and then provide the object some kind of an action that uh, you can call uh, with the ray shooter and uh, again and the way you would do that is use the um, the transform to get the access to the game object and then you could have something like this where you say get component and access uh, a script inside of uh, that uh, game object that would trigger some action. So uh, this uh, completes the demo of using a ray shooter. Thank you very much.